Alright, hey guys, and welcome to a brand new PSP tutorial. And for this PSP tutorial, we'll be covering graphics, and what we'll be doing is drawing to the screen. We'll be drawing a simple color triangle alongside of a square, and then we'll be also showing the more efficient way of drawing a square to the screen. This tutorial pretty much picks up right after the last one. The only thing that's changed here is number one, the name, and then number two, uh, we've changed the background color to black instead of being green. So for this tutorial, the first thing that we have to do uh, after we've initialized our graphics is that we want to make sure that when we draw to the screen, that we draw to the correct place on the screen. Um, and the way that placement is uh, worked out is through matrices. Uh, matrices are used for transformations. They're called affine transformations. Uh, and the order in which they occur does matter. For a more in-depth look at uh, graphics, uh, and how matrices work in general, uh, you'll probably need to look that up yourself. The majority of what we're going to be doing here is just looking at some very basic matrices. So we're going to start off by initializing the matrices. The first one we're going to do is matrix mode, GL matrix mode to GL projection. We will be using the GUGL library. Um, however, if you want the SEGU version, that's also included with the source code in the description. So, projection matrix. What the projection matrix does is it pretty much tells you if you're in 2D or 3D. When you're in 2D graphics, you're using an orthographic projection, and basically that means that everything you see on the screen is one-to-one -one with the way that it actually is supposed to look. This ends up creating a 2D effect. For 3D rendering, you would probably be using a perspective matrix, and by using a perspective matrix, you would get uh, that sort of field of view with the line foreshortening. So to set our matrix initially to have the default values, we use load identity. And what load identity does is it loads the default values for a matrix. And as you can see by the comment here, loading an identity, identity matrix looks like uh, this. And essentially when you multiply together identity matrices, what ends up happening is that there is no result. So that's how we know that that matrix, matrix is inert and does not perform a transformation. We will then set our projection here to be in the orthographic mode. And the orthographic uh, function here requires us to specify the left value, the right value, the bottom, the top, and the near and far value. So that's basically the minimum and maximum uh, of the x, y, and z axis. So you're basically defining a box in which you want everything to be in. Since we're doing 2D, the z matrix really doesn't matter here. Uh, so we can go ahead and set up our matrix. In order to set it so that everything doesn't look skewed, uh, we're going to use 16 by, uh, we'll be doing 16 by 9, which is the, ra um, uh, the ratio here, for both, for the x values. For the y values, everything will be localized to negative 1 to 1. And for the near and far plane, we'll do negative 10 and 10.0. Near and far will have a lot more value to you when you're using uh, perspective. For the other uh, matrices, we have the view matrix, which is useful for camera transformations. Uh, so this would be like the position of your viewer, where they're looking, etc. And then we can also initialize the model matrix. The model matrix is one that you'll be interacting with probably the most of all of these. Uh, and what it does is it sets the position of the current model. We're also going to create a small helper function here, and we're going to call it void. And then it will be reset uh, and translate. And we'll take in three floating point values, x, y, and z. And this utility function, all it does is it calls load identity on the current matrix. Uh, we might as well say GL matrix mode to GL model, just to be certain. Loading the model will also then create a PSP vector f3. So this is a floating point vector, and we'll just be saying it to x, y, and z. And then we'll be passing that into glu translate, which will translate to whatever position. So here we'll do v, and we have to pass in a pointer. So that will help reset our translation matrix, our matrix and set of translation, sorry. Now what we also have to do here is that since we're in 2D mode, we have to disable a few things. We want to first disable the depth testing function, the GL disable GL depth test, 
Same thing is going to happen for textures because we won't be using it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial we'll be covering textures, transparency, and blending. Now let's get into the real meat and potatoes of the actual process here. So the first thing we got to do is define a vertice. A vertice is a single point on a geometric uh, shape. So in this case for a triangle it's one of the points of the triangle. Triangles are often used as the default uh, drawing mode for pretty much everything because you can generate almost any shape you want with a bunch of triangles. So we'll do struct vertex and then in that structure it has a very specific layout that you need to do for the PSP. Uh, in the text tutorial there is a link to the specific order that you need to uh, do uh, depending on what things that you have enabled. So we'll do just a color and we'll just do the position. So the position is the X, Y, and Z values. And the color is going to be pretty much any of these hex codes like this. Now to create a actual triangle or so our actual data, we'll be using a, a set of vertices and these have to be 16-bit uh, aligned or 16-byte aligned, my bad in order to work. And then we'll just call it triangle and it will have three points, so three vertices. And then we can specify each vertex, one, two, and three. So the first thing we'll do is color. So for each one, we'll set a different color. So the colors I'm using here are red, green, and blue. And then if you use uh, control alt on uh, Visual Studio, you can do multi-line editing. And then we'll set the Z value to be negative one. It doesn't really matter. You can set this to pretty much anything, but they all should be the same Z value. So then we will have our first point. Our first point will be 0 0.35, 0 0.0. So this will be, if you think about triangle, right? This will be this point on the triangle. So that's our number one point. It's actually index zero, it's actually index zero, so I'll just put it as zero. Next, we're going to negative 0 0.35 and 0, 0.0. And what this will do is that we will then have one over here. So as you guys can see, our winding order ends up looking like this. So we're going from zero to one, and then we have the next one, which is two. And so that will be at 0, 0.0 and 0 0.5. And then we'll basically be going upwards. I'm not really sure how to express that. But yeah, we'll be going upwards. Uh, to 2. So if you can see that order, that is the clockwise winding order, which we specified earlier. So 0, 1, 2. So go, go, it's, if you imagine a clock, you can kind of understand how it's going, going around this way. You can actually put it in any order. So you could actually have 2 right here be the first one, and then you have a transition down to 0 and then to 1. All of these orders will work as long as it's in the correct order. We will then do GL, draw elements, uh, which is SCE, GUM, draw arrays. We'll do the type, so it has to be triangles, because, well, that's pretty much what we're trying to specify. And then we have this type, I'll come back to it. We have the count, which is the count of the number of indices. Since we don't have an indexed array, we're actually, it's actually the same as the count of vertices. So our indices is going to be a null pointer. And then our actual vertices will be the triangle. Now, this type here is called vertex type. And pretty much for the PSP, you have to specify what things you're using. You do this in a ORD together um, value. So first off, we'll be doing GL color 8888 alongside of our vertex 32-bit. And 32-bit F because it's floating point. And color 888 is the 8-bit per channel RGBA color here. 
Finally, we have to actually link this with Transform 3D as well, uh, which allows us to perform 3D transformations. You pretty much always want it on 3D transfer transformations over 2D transformations. So, if we actually go ahead and compile this code, let's see, there's something here. Oh, I used an escaped character there. That shouldn't actually end up changing anything. Maybe it does. Give me a second. Let me delete this comment really quick. Oh, I see. I have made a slight typo up here. Uh, this should be positive 16. If we go ahead and run that now, you can see that we actually have the triangle that we decided to draw in the middle of the screen. And congratulations, you've drawn your first object using PSP graphics. Now, of course, let's get into the case for indices. Earlier, we were talking about how GLDraw elements takes in this index array that we can choose not to put in. However, why would you use it? So, the first uh, sort of example here would be in the case where we would want to draw a square, for example. So if we just go ahead and take a look at it, a square will need two right triangles. So we'll do square six. And pretty much, let's do same colors here. And then we'll do 0 0.2. To, uh, so we'll start off at negative 0 0.25, negative 0 0.25, and negative 1. Now for this, we'll copy it six times. And then for this one, we'll change it to red, and this one, we'll change it to blue. For this, And then we'll change this to be positive 0 0.25 here. Both will be positive here. This one has to repeat, so if we order this, this is 0, 1, 2, then we'll have 2, 3, and 0. So we'll take 2 and copy it over. And then we'll take 0 and we'll copy it over. And then 3 will be, three will be the next one. So we'll make it white. And this one is the remaining vertex position that we haven't set yet, which is going to be 0 0.25, negative 0 0.25. And then if we go ahead, what I'm gonna do for this tutorial is I will be using the uh, reset translate. So we'll do reset translate, this to be negative 0 0.25, or sorry, negative 0 0.5 maybe, uh, 0 0.0, 0 0.0. And then this one for the square, I'll translate it to be 0 0.5 and then 0 0.25 up. And then we'll do GLDraw elements and we'll use GL triangles. We'll use the same thing as before for our vertex type. And then we'll use six because of the total number of uh, vertices and we'll use square. And now if we draw this, you can see we got the square on the right side. So cool. But as you must have noticed, we needed six total indices here. Uh, or sorry, we needed six total vertices. And it would be way more efficient if we could only use the four that you need for a square. So this is where indices come in. So if we copy this, the square, and then we call square in, call it square index. We can just specify only 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? Uh, and if you were to do this, it wouldn't work. So if I go and create another one, let's see, 0, 1, 0, and then down 0, 0.5. Here we go, and then we'll do square index. And we would update it to 4, because we only have 4. And if we were to run that, you'll notice that it doesn't draw the entire thing. And that's because we only have th we only have the data available for one valid triangle. The next one doesn't really make a triangle, so you can't really use it. So where this comes into line, we'll go ahead and create an unsigned short 
with the pack uh, with the same alignment attribute. And we'll call this our indices. And we will need six indices corresponding to the six vertices that you would need to draw. But we're going to use it to specify the order in which to draw our array. So if you consider each one as its own array value, 0, 1, 2, and 3, then you could do uh, then you just have to write in this order 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0. So we type in 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0. And then to draw with this indexing, we do GL index, and then we'll use 16 bit because we're using an unsigned short. And then we have to pass in the number of indices, which is still 6. And then we will pass in our indices array. Now, if we actually go ahead and compile that, what this ends up becoming is, you'll see, it draws the square. But we have saved a bunch of data here. We've, we've not had to repeat two vertices. For this very trivial example, we've saved about 16% of our total, uh, our total data. But for other things, like a cube, for example, a cube, you would need 36 total triangles, but you only have eight vertices. So by using an index, uh, or an in index array, basically you can uh, save about 65% of all of the data that you would need. This drastically cuts down the total amount of data you actually need to know. Because of this, it's very recommended to use indices in your programs in either OpenGL or in SCEGU. But that will be it for this tutorial. Congratulations on completing it. You've now drawn a triangle, a square, and used indices to draw a proper square on the screen. Soon, you'll basically be able to do whatever you want with PSP graphics. In the next tutorial, we'll be covering textures and transparency. So you can finally get some image into your game. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.